Well, Roger copped out, so no special music. I have a question that I don't believe probably anybody with very few exceptions, if any, can answer. The question is, what did the preacher talk about last Sunday? Hey, I can't believe that. At least three or four people remembered. That's amazing. Now be honest, how many of you didn't remember? See, now nobody wants to be honest then except Frank Warren. Of course, Frank never pays any attention to what I say, so I understand that. And that's a, that's a deacon for you, folks. That's all I can say is that's a deacon for you. We talked about death last Sunday. We talked about the death of Moses. The title of the message this morning is, After Death, What? After Death, What? Where were we in the Bible last Sunday? Deuteronomy chapter 34, the last chapter of Deuteronomy. Well, after death begins in the first book of Joshua. Moses had just died. So after death, what? Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass. You've heard me say it before, the old black preacher said, that's my favorite verse in all the Bible. It came to pass. Thank God it didn't come to stay. So many things in our life. Don't you thank God it didn't come to stay? It came to pass. It came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. After death, what? First of all, after death, we need to realize that the Lord still speaks. The Lord still speaks. I'm sure a lot of the people felt like after Moses died that they're not going to hear from the Lord anymore because God spoke through Moses. So now we're not going to hear from the Lord anymore. How many of you realize there are liberal theologians and philosophers that will try to tell you that when the complete scripture had been written, when the canon was completed, that God quit speaking? How many of you believe that? I got news for you. Just because the Bible was complete doesn't mean that God went deaf and dumb. God's not deaf and God's certainly not dumb. God still speaks today. Just as much as he ever spoke before, God still speaks today. You say, well, I don't know that God has ever spoken to me. I'm not going to ask you to show your hands. But how many of you would say, well, I just don't know that God's ever spoken to me. If you say that, that's dangerous to say. You say, why is it dangerous to say, I don't know if the Lord's ever spoken to me? Hold your place in Joshua and turn with me for just a moment to the Gospel of John, chapter 8. The Gospel of John, chapter 8. I want to show you one of those verses that's certainly not a refrigerator verse that many people wish was never put in the Bible because it hits too close to home to too many people, especially those that would say, oh, I don't believe you heard God speak. You ever had anybody tell you that? After you said you feel like God has spoken to you about something and somebody say, oh, I don't, I don't know that you've heard God speak or not. And, and they're skeptical whether or not you've heard from God. Let me show you a verse. John chapter 8, verse, 20, uh, verse 47. 
John chapter 8, verse 47. Listen closely. He that is of God heareth God's words. I want you to note, it says words, little w, not word, capital W. It's not, it's not that, it, that he that is God heareth, heareth God's word. You, you can hear, you can read God's word, but he's not talking about hearing through reading the word. It says words. He that heareth, he that is of God heareth God's words. What are words? Words are something that somebody speaks, right? So apparently God speaks words. Are we hearing them? God is always speaking. And God speaks words. Have you heard God speak to you personally? If not, he that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not. Listen, because ye are not of God. Those that are not of God do not hear God's words. Those who are not of God do not hear God speak. So if you're one of those that say, well, God's never spoken to me, or I don't know that God's ever spoken to me, be careful. It may mean, I'm not saying it is in your life, I'm just saying it may mean that you're not really of God. Now, what does it mean to say you're not of God? To say you're not of God means basically that you've never really and truly been saved. Because if you've been a born again, saved child of God, there are times in your life that God is going to speak to you. And if you have your spiritual ears on, if you have your spiritual antenna up, you're going to hear God's words. I'm reminded of the little Catholic nun that was telling somebody that God spoke to her and said something. And they said, well, how do you know God spoke? Was there an audible voice? And she said, no, it was much louder than that. You know, some of you understand that. I can tell by your look. It's, sometimes it's not an audible voice, but it's a voice in here. It's a spirit. The Bible says his spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we know we're children of God. When his spirit bears witness with your spirit, you can hear God speaking in your spirit. When God called me into the ministry on March 22nd, 1970, I heard God's voice as plain as I ever heard it in my life. When I said, God, if you got me, you hadn't got much, but I'll do anything you ask me to do, even if it means to preach. Made the biggest liar out of myself ever walked the earth. But God spoke to my heart, and God gave me a verse. It was emblazoned in my mind like I could see it written across the sky. I saw Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to all that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That became my ministry verse, Romans 1.16. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And from that day, I have preached anywhere and everywhere that God gave me opportunity to preach the gospel. I felt sorry in a way for Kathy this morning because she didn't have anybody in her congregation. Amen. Now I've never had that, but I, I made a trip all the way to Washington State, Tacoma, Washington. Not long after I went into the evangelism ministry, I made a trip all the way to Washington State to do a meeting at Good News Baptist Chapel in Tacoma, Washington. The first night of that revival meeting, there was myself and three people, the pastor and his two children. Now, where his wife was, I have no clue. <laughs> but there was me, the pastor, and his two children, first night of the revival. So what did I do? I preached. I gave him the whole load. <laughs> Whatever God had put on my heart to preach, I gave him the whole load. What, why do I say that? 
Because God had a word for one of those people that was there. I'm sure of that. Because God speaks. And believe it or not, some of you would probably deny this or, or, or be skeptical of it. But sometimes God even speaks through the preacher. God speaks mainly to us, though, folks, through his word. That's why you've heard me say over and over and over and over in the 16 plus years that I've been pastoring here at Bruceville Baptist Church, be in God's word every day. Set aside a time where you're in God's word daily because God speak to us mainly through his word. Now, he can speak in a thousand other ways if he chooses to. But mainly he speaks through his word. The written word, the living word, the capital W word, Jesus. He speaks to us. Back to Joshua. Back to Joshua. The Lord still speaks. I hope you get that point. When Billy Graham died, by the way, God didn't stop speaking. A lot of people were so big fans of Billy Graham, they thought when Billy Graham died, it was over, you know. God went out of business because Billy died. No, God's not going to go out of business till he's done with everything that he said was going to happen. The Lord still speaks. Secondly, after death, what? The world still goes on. The world still goes on. Verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. So what now? Quit? You followed Moses all these years? Moses is dead. Is it time to quit? Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. The world still goes on. God says, I've still got a job for you to do. You're still to go in and possess the promised land. Now, God didn't let Moses go into the promised land. Why did he not let him go? Because of one act of disobedience. One act of disobedience against God. God told Moses at one time, speak to the rock and it'll bring water and water the church in the wilderness. Instead of speaking to the rock, Moses struck the rock twice according to the word of God. And it was a, diso it was a disobedient to God's command. A and you'd think with 40 years of ministry, 40 years of successful ministry, devoted ministry of leading God's people in the wilderness for 40 years. God would let Moses slide on one act of disobedience, but he didn't. Which says to us how important it is not to disobey God. How many of you feel like you've ever disobeyed God in your life? Did you ask forgiveness for it? If you hadn't, you better do it quickly. Ask God for forgiveness. Moses didn't get to go into the problem. Doesn't, and and I, I believe there's some, of course, people that want to do things with the Bible that's ridiculous. It says, well, that means Moses didn't go to heaven. <laughs> you know, since Moses didn't get to go into the promised land, that means Moses didn't go to heaven. I don't believe that. Now, you can if you want to. I mean... You know, you got a right to be wrong. But I don't believe that's what that means. But he didn't get to go into the physical promised land across Jordan because of an act of disobedience. But the world still goes on. Now, how did it go on in this case? Remember last Sunday when we talked about, when we talked about Moses making preparation for the future? Remember when we talked about that? Anybody remember? One of the things Moses did was make preparation for the And how did he do that? By anointing his successor, Joshua, to take over when Moses was gone. When Moses died, he had already made arrangements by anointing Joshua to take over when Moses had died. 
And so the world was still going to go on. Not, as, well, not with Moses as the leader, but with Joshua as the leader. So the world still goes on. Third, after death, what? After death, God's promises are still valid. God's promises are still valid. Look at verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. That was a promise of God. Let me ask you a question. Did it come to pass? Ob obviously. When they finally went in to possess the land, everywhere the sole of their foot touched, God had given them that land. It was theirs. And you know what was amazing? They had to fight some battles in the promised land, but some they didn't have to. You know why? Remember when the two spies went into the land and Rahab the harlot hid the spies and everything? God told her that her and her family would be saved because of hiding the spies when they came into the land. And you know what? You remember what Rahab told them when they came into the land? She said basically, and this is in Texas language, say, where y'all been? When we heard that y'all were coming, we heard that y'all were coming and getting ready to cross, said the men threw down their weapons and ran in fear because they had heard what God had done for you in bringing you out of Egypt and, and in through the wilderness. And, and they were ready just to lay down their weapons and let them walk on in. But they did not do that because of a lack of faith. Remember, they sent spies into the land. And the spies came back and said, We can't, we can't, we can't. We're like grasshoppers in their sight. They're giants in the land. We can't, we can't. And some preacher said, The can'ts is the worst disease ever got in a Baptist church. Oh, we can't do that. We can't afford it. We can't do that. We can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. God wants to get rid of the can'ts. God wants some can-do Christians that says we can do it with the help of God, with the God's Spirit working in and through us. We can do it. We're getting rid of the can'ts, and we're starting to believe the cans. God's promises are still valid. The promise to be with us. The promise to be with us. Look at verse 5. There shall, not one, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Listen to this. This is a promise. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. How many of you are glad that's God's promise? God has promised, Christian friend, He'll never leave you or forsake you. He'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. God's promises are true, folks. Every promise of God in the Bible are yea and amen in Jesus Christ. It's as well as a done deal. If God promised it, it's going to be exactly the way God said. Not only is His promise to be with us, but how, how about His promise to remove all fear? Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. Here's another great promise of God. Have I not commanded thee? Listen. Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. How many of you are afraid today? How many of you have ever been afraid before? God said, be not afraid. How can He say that? Neither be thou dismayed. You ever been dismayed? Not able to figure it out? I've been dismayed many, many, many times in ministry. Not trying to figure out what in the world's going on. What in the world we're doing. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? Just totally dismayed. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Why? For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. The Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. 
Never fear, Christian friend. God is always near. God is always there to help you in your time of need. What is God's promise in Philippians 4.19? My God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You do not have a need that God cannot supply. You do not have a need in your life that God can't take care of. We have the promises of God, and the promises of God in Scripture are yea and amen in Jesus Christ. After death, what? Life goes on. Claim the promises of God. Be obedient to God's Word. Stay in tune with God. Be in God's Word. Pray daily. Ask for those things that God puts on your heart to pray about. How many of you believe God still answers prayer? <coughs> well, He does whether you believe it or not. Amen. Makes a difference to pray. Amen. Amen. That's why we go over our printed prayer list. Every person put on that list had a need that God needed to supply. And it's amazing how many people have been on and off of our prayer list because God still answers prayer. Amen? And God's going to be with us as long as we trust and believe in Him. God is going to be with us no matter what. It looks like the world's going to hell in a handbasket. But let me tell you, ultimately, God is still in control. It's hard to see that sometimes, hard to believe it sometimes, but ultimately, God is still in control. Yes. And God's going to have His will in His way. And when Jesus comes again, oh, it's going to be something else. I don't know. I, I, I wish, in a way, even though we're going to be gone in the rapture, maybe God will let us look down and see how all the CNN commentators and those kind of people answer the question of all those millions of people that disappeared in the rapture. I'd be anxious to hear how they explain it. Oh, they'll spin it, that's for sure. They spin everything else in the world. Why not spin that? We need to take care of some spinners. On sinners and spinners need to be taken care of. Amen? Hey, after death, life goes on. Trust God. Believe Him. Never give up. Winston Churchill, World War II. Never give up. Never, never give up. Standing in the middle of a bombed out city, telling people, don't give up. God's in control. And He is. Stand together.